In this video, I'm going to cover the gas chromatograph. The basic parts are the auto sampler, which draws sample from the sample tray and injects it via this injection port. Generally speaking, this will be quite hot. The sample goes into the column, which sits in the oven. It is separated in the column and fed into the detector. The detector in this unit is an FID. As you can see, this is using the front detector and the front injection port. Over here, we have a slew of controls. However, we generally control the machine via the computer. And I will show you that momentarily. So before we set up our method, we need to load our sample. To begin with, we make sure that the waste vials are present. I filled solvent A with acetone. Then I load my sample into the sample slot. The purpose for all this is that we need to wash the needle first with solvent and then with our sample before we inject. I will demonstrate that now. So the sample tray is rotating and we are now drawing up solvent A to rinse the needle. It is being deposited into the waste vial. Now we're drawing up a little bit of solvent to rinse with the sample. We're drawing up sample rather. Again, to make sure the inside is coated with sample and not solvent anymore. And the machine is now doing what's called pumping, which is to draw up sample and make sure there are no air bubbles. Air bubbles being injected into the small column will cause problems for the readings. Now that the sample has been de-aerated, the needle should draw up sample and then inject it. There goes the injection. Oh, so now that you've seen it injected, normally that doesn't happen until you set up your method. But we wanted to demonstrate it. Now we're going to show you how to set up a method so you can load your sample and run your sample and analyze it. All right, so now that Jesse has showed you guys how to uh, set up your injector, so we have our sample in there and we have our wash solvent and we also have um, the two waste vials. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna set the instrument up on the um, computer. Now, normally when you're um, doing this, the injector won't start to inject until you've set the everything up on the computer. Um, we just showed you the injection work um, so you could see what happens and we didn't have to move the camera and that kind of stuff. So as you can see, we have a little bit of uh, archaic technology going on here. We're actually recording a screen so this is going to zoom in and out a little bit on you and uh, I hope you can see uh, kind of what's going on here so the first thing we would do is we open up this GC software now if it works you'll see this it won't give you any kind of errors if there can sometimes be errors if that happens uh, just ask your TA so the first thing we want to do is we want to click on method and then we want to click on edit entire method and by default all of these boxes will be checked and we just want to leave them checked and go ahead and hit OK now some of the things we're going to do here you actually don't need to do anything uh, but since this is maybe your first time seeing this software um, this is uh, uh, old software but it does work very well um, I just want to go through everything so I'm just gonna click OK so method comments you know you could write here forensic chemistry is terrible uh, but we're just gonna leave this uh, blank here because we don't need any comments all right Next thing, this is important. We want to select injector and source. Occasionally, you'll want to do a manual injection, not so much in this course, but here we want to use that GC injector. That is the auto sampler that Jesse showed you a few minutes ago. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. When you do this, um, now this is the main program, and I'll show you how to get back to this in just a few minutes, but basically it starts you off at oven. I suggest we start at injector for the very simple reason that it's here, and then I can just go through these things one at a time, and I won't miss anything. So a couple things. Uh, first, I want to make sure that this says use front injector. On some instruments, it will be the back injector, but in this case, it is the um, front injector that we want to use. Jesse showed you that the injector was in the front. We want to inject one microliter. It'll probably be set to one microliter. Uh, that's what we always use here uh, for these injections. Then these are your pre-injection um, um, 
kind of washes. So the first thing is the sample. We want to do that three times, solve a day. That's the acetone that Jesse put in. We want to do that twice. And we want to have six pumps to get rid of air bubbles. Post-injection, we want to do two washes with the acetone. We're going to leave this like this. If anything is different from here, you're going to want to go ahead and change it. Someone might have used solvent B. That's not uncommon. Uh, but in your case, uh, with simple alkane-type molecules and toluene, you don't need two solvents. So we're just go ahead and leave it here. Next, I want to click on valves. You'll notice that uh, there's nothing to do here. So basically, you could just click on inlets. So same thing here, front or back. In our case, the inlet is in the front. Sometimes it's in the back, but we want to use the uh, front inlet. You want to make sure that these three boxes are checked. The only one you really care about is the heater, and you want to make sure the heater is set to 250. These other ones will um, set themselves by default, and you don't need to worry about them. We want to make sure that the split ratio is set to 20 to 1, and that the mode is set to split. Occasionally, someone will change this to split list, but generally speaking, this should be on split. So um, then we want the split ratio of 20 to 1. Next, we want to click on columns. Um, this should all be default, and you shouldn't need to change anything. The only thing that may change occasionally is this blue, which is um, the flow, and you want to set the flow to one mill a minute. That is standard for the, for the uh, 0.25 micron columns that we have. Next, oven. So oven, as I talked about in the other video, is where the action is kind of happening. This is where we change the method. Most of the stuff is just um, default, and we're not going to change it. So you'll recall that we started the uh, oven program at 5. We held it for 2 minutes. We then ramped it at 20 degrees a minute up to 250, and we held for 10 minutes. Now, one way you could check to make sure that you have your method set up right is it calculates the total time for you of 22 minutes. We expect 22 minutes, so we're good to go. Next, we want to hit detector. Again, front or back um, for the detector. On our instrument, it's front. Sometimes it's back. We want to make sure the heater's on. The hydrogen flow, um, you could either set to 40 and 400 or 35 and 350. Uh, what's important is that you have uh, 10 times um, the flow of air as you have of hydrogen. So here, 40 and 400 is fine. 35 and 350 is usually also fine. Um, so you can just leave it basically what it says. Make sure all these other boxes are checked and that the flame and the electrometer are checked. This will then um, allow the um, detector to light. Note that the detector will not light below 150 degrees. So if you click apply here and, and your detector is at room temperature, don't expect your detector to light until the temperature reaches um, 250 degrees or 150 degrees. But we want the set point at 250, which is the only thing you may occasionally want to change. But this should all be default. All right, signals. Sometimes you'll change this, but generally speaking, this is you're just going to leave it as it is. Runtime and options, you're never going to change. Once you do that, you go ahead and click OK. The next screen is um, just the available signals. Uh, we're not going to add any signals to our method, so we're just going to hit OK. The next thing is setting up our integration. We have set this up for you. As I mentioned earlier, it will detect some peaks that you don't actually want to detect, but we have to set it up sensitive enough that it will actually detect the peaks of interest, your analytes, in this case. So we're just going to go ahead and hit OK. Um, I usually like my report, this is the spe uh, specified the report type, to go to the screen. That way, if I make a mistake or something like that, um, and I don't want that one, I don't get a printout of it. Uh, once it's printed to the screen, you can just click a button on the screen that will allow you to print your report, so you have no problem to print that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. Um, here, we're not running any runtime checklists, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. And now my GC is ready to go. What I would like to do is just point out to you, let's say I wanted to change the method. Well, as we talked about in the previous uh, video, uh, where you're going to change the method is the oven temperature program. So this will bring me to the inlet. This will bring me to the um, column. And this will bring me to the FID. You can't really find the oven. But you'll know, no matter which one I click, all I have to do is click over to oven, and I can change my temperature program right here. I hit apply, and the GC will change the temperature program. So what you're going to do is allow this method to um, 
integrate into the GC. In my case right now, the oven is cooling down to 50 degrees because it was set um, at a very high temperature a minute ago. And basically, once the GC is ready to go, you can go ahead and hit start, and that will do your injection. Because this injection could take up to 22 minutes, um, we're not going to show you how to do that and make this a really long video. But what I do want to do is I want to turn it back over to Jesse, and he's going to show you on the instrument, uh, that control panel, how to view the current state of the instrument. So here we have our control panel. There are three things of interest to you on the panel. First is the oven. As Colin said, the oven is basically the heart of the GC. This is where you make adjustments to your method and you wanna make sure you are at the set point you want to be at. Our set point, as you can see here, is 50. And we are holding steady at 50, exactly as we programmed. The next option you might want to investigate are your inlets. Because we're using the front inlet, I'm going to do the front inlet button. If you are injecting through the back inlet, you would use the back inlet. We are in split mode. We are at the correct temperature. Everything is good with the inlet. The final thing you'd want to check out is your detector. Again, we are using the front detector. If this were on a back detector, you would use the back detector button. We are at temperature. We have good hydrogen and airflow. As you can see, we have a 10 to 1 ratio. And if we scroll all the way down, we can see that our flame is on, because the machine tells us that it is. And the other way we know that our flame is good is that our output is greater than 1. If the flame were off, it would read about 0.1, maybe 0.2. So we know everything is good to go, and we are ready to run our sample. So... We've gone over what we're looking for. However, on the inlet, there is a possible troubleshooting issue. You see this pressure setting. If that is reading low, it is possible that you may have a leak. If this happens, the machine will not run. Please consult your TA. Other than that, you have now learned the workings of a GC and how to operate one. Thank you for watching.